Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So in this uh, video, I want to continue to give some examples of continuous render variable. So in previous uh, videos, we always talk about a normal render variable. It's a very important uh, in the uh, our statistic and probabilities. And in this video, I want to talk about another important example of continuous render variable. The name is exponential distribution or exponential render variable. So this one actually is have some close relationship to the Poisson distribution. So in the previous videos, we talked about what is Poisson distribution. This is an important example of a discrete render variable. So if you haven't looked at that video, please make sure you look at this before uh, you continue to look at this video. So when we talk about Poisson render variable, we always talk about a Poisson process. So that means here, this is an experiment that satisfies three requirements. So the first one is if we have a length of, no matter is a length of uh, time or length of uh, some specific uh, products. So generally, the first thing we will do is we will dis uh, partition this one into many small uh, subsets or subintervals. So here for the Poisson render uh, Poisson process, we generally to assume the partition is n goes to infinity. So in that other words, the length of the sub uh, interval should be we denote by delta t. So this will tends to go to zero. So in this one, we have three requirements. The first one is a probability of the mean, uh, the probability of more than one event, or say more than one success, happens in every sub uh, interval, should so tends to uh, zero. So that means uh, when the sub interval is goes to zero, there is no uh, more than one event will happen here. So you can think if there are two events, they cannot happen at the same time. And then the second is the probability of one event in a sub uh, interval is uh, turns to a lambda times delta t. So in other words, here lambda is an uh, important uh, parameter in the Poisson render variables. It shows us some uh, uh, information of the mean and how many success we will have. And here, what this means? This means if we have the delta t, so that means the length of the sub-interval is increasing because lambda is a constant, right? So that means we will have a higher chance to find one success or one event in this uh, sub-interval. And the last one is the event in each sub-interval should be independent, uh, independent with another one. So that means here, because for each of the sub-interval, it generally means it has only one event. So that means all of the events will have to locate it in one specific uh, sub-intervals, which is a didn't in overlap with another sub-interval, right? So in other words, uh, actually all of the events of success should independent with each other. So the most uh, uh, classical example of this one is we think about like a customer go to a like bank or some like ATM. So that means there cannot be two customer arrival at the same time. So it's always like one arrive, even for seconds earlier than another one. This means they didn't came here at the same time. And also for the and also for the customer, they came here, when they come here, it's independent with the other customer. They didn't communicate it with each other. And also if we stay in this uh, bank and they try to find uh, there is a customer arrival, the longer we stay here, so that means the longer of the, uh, longer of the length of the sub-interval, then it's higher chance we can find there is a customer arrival. So this is an important example of a Poisson process. So why I describe this uh, in detail? Because the exponential distribution is very close and also related to a Poisson process. 
So for the uh, exponential random variable, what they describe, they describe the distance uh, or between uh, sec uh, successive events from a Poisson process. So what this means, this means the Poisson random variable is count about x of the random variable is defined as how many success we have at this time. However, for the exponential random variable is described the distance or kind of a kind you can see the waiting time or we say the inter uh, arrival times of this uh, arrival of a customer. So that means for the exponential random variable. In general this is a positive number. So you can think of like okay we find there is a customer arrival and then we have a counter clock and we, we click in and we say like oh we wait how many minutes and then another customer is arrived. So this time is be defined as our random variable. And uh, for this one when we use the also have a parameter lambda. So here this lambda is about what is the mean of the number of in ones per unit interval. So this is give us the parameters of this uh, exponential random variable. So in this situation, when we define our exponential random variable by this definition, then we can get the probability density function. This probability density function is a lambda times e to negative lambda x. So of course here, when we say this uh, exponential random variable is equal to some distance, the so waiting times, everything of this is a non-negative value, right? So that's why for our value, possible value of this random variable, small x, it should be larger or equal to zero. And it can be any possible uh, numbers. So here, this is what the definition of uh, exponential random variable. So similar with when we talk about the examples of uh, some standard or typical uh, random variable, we want to talk about two things. The first thing is what is mean, and the second is what is variance. So if uh, you have looked at my videos about mean and variance of a continuous random variable, you will know the mean of our random continuous random variable. We can denote this by mu or the capital X. This is about the interval of fin negative infinity to positive infinity, the value of our random variable times its uh, PDF. And this is the interval integral with respect to x. And then the variance, we denote this by sigma square or v of x. So this have two methods to denote this. One is by our definition is a mean of x minus uh, our mu square. So in other words, this is look like this equation. However, by the rewrite of this equation, we can have our second method to compute this. So the second method to compute this is this will look like uh, an integral of x squared with res and uh, times uh, PDF with respect to x minus the mu squared. So this is two methods to compute our uh, variance of a continuous random variable. So based on these two definitions, we can plug in our formula for the PMF into these uh, two equations. And then by some calculation, we can get uh, results for our mean of uh, exponential random variable and uh, variance of uh, exponential random variable. However, in this one, I actually want to give you uh, just the result, uh, the explicit uh, equations for our mean and variance of uh, exponential random variable. The equations look like this. If we have a random variable x is an exponential random variable with a parameter lambda. So here please remember the parameter is about the average of our uh, events will happen in a per unit interval, right? So in other words, uh, how many, how long of the 
time we need to wait to get one result is one over lambda. So here this value of lambda must be a positive value. And then the mean of this uh, exponential random variable is one over lambda. Actually this is just uh, by my explanation, right? So this is uh, 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 like uh, how long we will wait to get one result or one side. Okay, so here because mean we have two names, we can call it mean and we also can call it an expect value. So here, uh, that's why I write this. So one over lambda is our mean and also expect value. And then the variance of uh, exponential render variable is uh, denoted by sigma square or capital V. So this is one over lambda square. So these two equation is exactly from our previous uh, definition of our mean and variance. Here I just uh, to save you time to get the calculation of this one. And we also have a uh, one more important uh, property of our uh, exponential render variable. So for this one, generally we call it a memory lines pro property. So this is when we have x as an exponential random variable. Then we have this property. So that means here the left hand side of this equation is a condi conditional uh, probability. So if you forgot what is this, please look at my video of continuous uh, a conditional probability. So for conditional probability, that means uh, what the probability of x is smaller or equal to one t1 plus t2 given the information of x is larger than t1. So this probability actually is equal to the probability x is smaller than t2. Okay, so here what this means, this means you can think about Okay, with about five minutes, we want to, like, within five minutes, there is a one customer arrive. Then, if we already know in the first two minutes, there is a, there is a one customer arrive, then this probability of waiting five minutes to get a customer when two, within two minutes there is already customer. It's same with us waiting three minutes to get a customer. So in other words, it's like when there is a customer arrive at the end of the second uh, minute, then additional three minutes we will get a customer or there is no customer arriving the uh, in, in any time, and we just think about we wait here three minutes, we get a customer. This two probability is same. So in other words, actually this is uh, uh, what we have. The basic uh, theoretical reason is all customer arrive here or not is independent with each other. So no matter previous how many customers we already have, from now to think what will happen in the future is a new uh, new uh, event or new experiment. This is didn't uh, depend on our history, didn't depend on how many customers we already have. So this is we call it a memoryless property of an exponential random variable. So this is a really, really important property for the exponential random variable. And this is also a very special event to uh, in our real life, because most of the most of the thing is depends on our history, right? So, for example, think like how many how much money I will earn for my second job. It depends on how much money I earn in this job, and how uh, like maybe you performance of your final exam because the final exam is a cumulative exam then this will relate it to uh, what's your performance to the force uh, of your meter. Although you can use a lot of uh, work, like you work so hard to get a better performance, but it generally depends on your uh, first uh, performance for your first uh, test. So most of the experiments or what happened in our real life is not a memory lens experiment. However, in some special uh, case, 
this memory that is uh, exists, for example, about what we say a customer arrives in the bank because they are independent of each other, so that's why we have memory less. So that's why in statistics, a uh, memory less uh, render variable is very important because without this one, we cannot describe this, um, this event happens in our real life. Okay, so this is my explanation of the exponential render variable and distributions. This is uh, some two important parameters, mean and variance, and it's important property, memorialized property. So for this one, uh, this is the end of this video. In next video, I will continue to talk about more topics in probability. So please subscribe to this channel and I hope I can see you in next video.